starting a new series today, 100% grace and 0% performance. This is a follow-on from what we've been talking about, um, spirit, soul, and body. And I, I said right at the start of, the, of that series, back in January, that that is the foundation where everything else um, that I have come across since 2011, my encounter with the Lord overseas, is built on that understanding that God Almighty actually lives in us but he lives in our spirit, and therefore we cannot verify his presence by looking in the mirror in our flesh or even check our thinking. So following from there is this topic, is this new series. It's all about grace and nothing about us. If you can grab hold of that, just that topic, the theme there, those words, you will get the essence of this series. Our key scripture today, as you see in the bulletin, is by grace you have been saved, that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Now this is not a new scripture. I'm sure you have seen this um, scripture before, but it is loaded with not just meaning, but with power. If this scripture can grab hold of your heart today, because this is the foundation we're going to build from here onward, it will really, really set you free. It will really give you freedom. It will really open your eyes to a dimension that God has that maybe you've never tasted before. So, I want us to walk through this scripture today, what exactly it's talking about. By grace you have been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, um, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. So this is what it means. <clears throat> grace is a gift, God's gift. It is free. You cannot earn it. If somebody give, um, gives you uh, a gift, you didn't earn it. You didn't pay for that gift. Somebody just gave it to you, right? That is a gift. On the other hand, this gift is, uh, and faith as well, is also a gift. So both grace and faith are both gifts of God. You cannot earn them. So when it says, by grace you have been saved through faith and that not of yourselves, it's stressing the points that grace and faith are not human origin. It, they are not things that we come up with, we conjure up. They are actually given to us by God. Grace or unmerited favor, as we normally refer to, is a gift that God has given you and I through Jesus Christ. And so it's the faith. It's the faith of God. Did you know that it was God's faith that made you born again? You will hear me later on in the... Uh, in the coming weeks as I talk about faith. But for today, it says it comes by hearing the word of God. Note, it's not having heard. It's not you will hear, but hearing, present continuous tense. Um, which is why you have to read your Bible, and which is why you have to listen to sermons. It's on the spot. Faith comes on the spot. If you don't hear the word of God, you won't hear faith. If you don't hear the proclamation, you won't hear faith. It's by hearing, present continuous tense. So what you may have heard yesterday was great, but you have to be up to date every waking moment. Know the word of God, because every time you read the word of God and you hear the word of God, the power of God is released. Faith comes by hearing. Faith 
and grace are both gifts of God. Keep that in mind as we move along. Mercy. We do not deserve what we deserve. What we do not get what we deserve. You hear the word mercy a lot. And it simply means that we were actually supposed to be punished for our sins. Romans 3.23, which is one of the memorized verses of those spiritual laws, those of you who have studied that in the past, it said, For all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. Remember the verse? All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. God and sin cannot go in um, go in habit. They is either God or sin, and sin in the presence of God has to be punished, has to be dealt with. In fact, it has to be killed, because God will not put up with sin. And according to the Bible, we have all sinned, and we were supposed to be punished. We were supposed to be receiving the death sentence. Romans 6.23, the wages of sin is death. But what did we get? We got this. We got grace. Which is why it's called a gospel. An amazing good news that everyone needs to hear. Instead of getting the punishment, we got Jesus' righteousness, which is an amazing exchange. We got his life for all of eternity. And you can live the reality of that life right now. You don't have to wait until you die to walk in this new life. John 10.10, 10, enemy comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I have come that you may have life, life in all its fullness or abundantly. By grace, you have been saved through faith. And that not of yourselves, it is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone boasts. So, you receive mercy. I received mercy. God's mercy. Instead of punishing us, he gave us Jesus Christ. And now, we get what we do not deserve. I don't know about you, but... That's quite powerful. What else? Well, this free gift cannot be earned, as I said earlier on. When you work for a boss or somebody, you receive wages. That's not grace. You earn it. You must work for it. And in fact, when you work for somebody, you actually anticipate and looking forward to your payday, don't you? Because you have earned the dollar or however. Listen to this verse. Now to him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. The boss owes you money the moment you start working, don't you? That's, that's why you have signing sheets and so forth, how long, what is the hourly rate, you know, or is it salary versus wages? It's a debt. Your boss owes you money as soon as you work. That's not grace. To him who works, the wages are not counted as grace, but as debt. What does that mean? It means that if we are saved by grace, God's love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, and so forth, they are actually gifts. They are gifts. You don't earn any of them like wages. You didn't work up something towards God, so God says, oh, okay, you can have my peace now. You can have my joy now. You can have my protection now. No, it's grace. 
It's all grace. A lot of people have been trying for many, many years to get rid of their problems. You know how they do it? By being good. They appeal to the law. If I go to church, if I read my Bible, if I give my money, if I help the old lady to cross the road, if I love my neighbor, and the list goes on and on and on. Those, my friends, are works. That's like working for a boss. But it doesn't work when it comes to God. Remember, it's grace. It's all grace. Romans 5 verse 8 says, While we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Christ died for us. So his love, his joy, his peace, and all the fruits of the Spirit that we've been talking about as living in your spirit, in your born-again spirit, they are gifts of God. They are gifts of God. And so when you approach God and say, God, I wish I have your love, I wish I have your peace, you are approaching God in the wrong way. You are coming to God in the flesh. Remember what we said? He is a spirit. He sees spirit to spirit. He sees your spirit, your born-again spirit. He's not looking at your flesh and what you're going through. He's not looking at your mind, what you're thinking. He's looking at your spirit. So, this love, joy, peace, and patience, all of that, they are in your spirit. And they are gifts. You don't earn them. You have it all the time, even now, as you're sitting there. You have all the fruit nine fruit of the Spirit within you. But just remember, you didn't earn them. They are gifts. They are yours. They are free from God. What does that mean? There's a difference between slaves and those who belong to God. Slaves big. And one of the reasons why I've started this series of messages, I come to realize um, no, I grew up in a very traditional church. And every Sunday, the message that came loud and clear is to be a good person. Be a good person. Then God will give you love, joy, peace, patience, kindness. And it was a forever, like a, a vicious cycle. The question that I always had is, but how do you know when you are good enough? And it was a losing battle. It went on and on and on and on, not until I discovered this and I thought, I think we're trying to compete with Jesus. If it's by grace, then it's by grace. <laughs> it's not because I do anything. In fact, what I've learned for many, many years is... I was really a slave. I was begging God. God, can you please give me this? God, can you please do this? God, and so forth and so forth. I was acting like a slave. What I should have acted is this. I should have been a son of God. You ladies and women, you should be daughters of God. And it's a huge difference between those uh, two entities a slave versus a family member. I've used this analogy so many times. When our children used to come home from university, none of them asked permission to sleep in a bed. None of them asked for permission to open a fridge. None of them asked for permission to have a shower. Why? Family members, they belong to the Falea Chua household. Many, many Christians do not walk according to their identity. They are God's sons and daughters. But what do we do? Oh God, please do this. Oh God, please do that. Oh God, we continuously big. We are coming to God as slaves, not children of God. That's why I'm very passionate about this because this really, really sets me free. Changing the mentality of how I relate to God. I come to you, Daddy God, because you are my Daddy God. You are my Father. I'm your son. You love me with an everlasting love. 
Let me give an illustration of this. I mentioned this last week. In, this is the scripture that the men's ministry looked at um, two Fridays ago. In fact, that's all we, we spent our whole evening on were those five verses. They are powerful words. Listen to this. So it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom, as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you, except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. I came to you in weakness, with great fear and trembling. My message was my message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. And here's the, the conclusion. So that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. Those are powerful verses. So powerful that I want to walk through what they actually mean. And so it was with me, brothers and sisters, when I came to you, I did not come with eloquence or human wisdom as I proclaimed to you the testimony about God. I said last week that Paul, in today's standard, he's at least a double PhD person, very, very learned. I was very privileged to, to learn both the classical Greek and the Koine um, the New Testament Greek. And if you read through Paul's letters, his style of writing is very, very eloquent compared to, say, Peter's and James. Chop, chop Greek. In fact, I got one of uh, the professors that was teaching both uh, Greek and Latin, just a wee piece, and I said, what do you think? And it was, it was a she, she said, yeah, that's, that's a very good Greek. Very learned man. And, and see what he said, though. He said, I did not come to you with eloquence uh, or human wisdom. He is a very, very learned man, very intellectual, highly academic and all of that. And yet he said to the Corinthians, I did not come to you with my arm long degrees. No, 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 no. To drive home the point, it's 100% grace and 0% performance. If you can grab hold of this, because Paul, of all people, wrote almost two-thirds of the New Testament, and yet, when you see how he approached the whole subject, he never focused on himself. He knew where the power came from. Gospel. In Paul's writings, he calls it uh, my gospel. I love that. He says, my gospel. And in Romans uh, 1.16, it says, For I'm not ashamed of the gospel, because it's the power of God unto salvation for everyone who believes, first the Jews, then the Gentiles. It's the power of God. The power of God. Where does the power come from? It comes from this understanding. It's not got to deal with my education, where I've come from. I grew up in a very awesome family. You know, I've got very rich uncles and so forth. We've got so much land. It's got nothing to do with us. Though we may have all of that, Paul says, no, no, no. I didn't come to you that way, Corinthians. I came to you, as you will see later on, through the power of God. I proclaim to you through the power of God. Not our gifts or talents, knowledge, anything to do with human strength. In fact, if you read through the rest of the chapter, it's full of amazing truths. This will set you free. If you've been trying and trying and trying and trying to hear from God, to sense the presence of God, to see somebody saved and so forth, Today, I want to say to you, give up and give it to Jesus. 
It's time to stop struggling. And even with things like sins, stop tr- struggling. Give it over to Jesus. And you walk in freedom. It is an amazing experience to walk in freedom. Not of works. It's by the grace of God. Isn't it great? That it's the power of God that can actually set us free. Nothing to do with us. It's all Jesus. Hallelujah. That's such a, an amazing proclamation, Lord. For I resolved to know nothing while I was with you except Jesus Christ and Him crucified. Paul says, I didn't want to tell you that I'm a learned man. In fact, the Bible says that he was in, a, I think, the school of uh, Camillo, one of the top scholars of the time. Very, very, and Paul was part of that crowd. And yet, Paul did not mention any credentials whatsoever. He ignored all of that. He said, I only wanted to know one thing. Jesus Christ and him crucified. That's all I wanted to talk to you about. Jesus Christ and him crucified. Not depending on myself. Total focus on Jesus and everything he has done. Jesus' death is your freedom. Galatians 5 verse 1. It is for freedom's sake that Christ has set us free. What an amazing declaration. It is for your freedom and my freedom that Christ set us free. That Christ died. He died to set you free. So if you are struggling, it's because you are running on your own strength. You are trying so hard and it's driving you crazy. And you're losing peace. You can't sleep and so forth. That's because you're going on your strength. You're calling upon God like a slave instead of being a daughter or a son. You have to give up and give over to Jesus. It is for our freedom that Jesus freed us. The rest of the verse says, Therefore, do not be enslaved to bondage again. That's the rest of that verse. Because Paul says, well, because Paul knows, even after you become born again, we have free will, right? We can still sin if we choose to. So he says, you have been freed, but don't use your freedom to go and sin. God doesn't ordain that or allow that. He loves you. He's forgiven you. He has blessed you. But you will open the door to the devil. And it will hit you left, right, and center. So give up. Give over to Jesus. And you will see the devil running. James 4, 7. Submit to God. Resist the devil. And he shall flee from you. Amazing, amazing revelation of what Jesus has done. I came to you in weakness with great fear and trembling. My message and my preaching We're not with wise and persuasive words, but with demonstration of the Spirit's power. Of the Spirit's power. This is what Paul is talking about. He says, I am mortal, but God who lives in me is immortal. He's saying, I am weak, but Christ who's in me is powerful. He's saying, the power of the Spirit within me demonstrates the presence of God that goes with me. That's what he's saying. So not what I have earned, not what I've learned, and all of that, but it's who is present within me. His name is Holy Spirit. I came to you with weakness, great fear, and trembling. My message and my preaching were not with wise and persuasive words, but with a demonstration of the Spirit's power. Do you want to see the demonstrations of the Holy Spirit's power in your life? Then you give up and give over to Jesus. That is the only way you will see the demonstrations of the Holy Spirit's power in your life. It's basically giving over, surrendering. New master, new Lord, 
the one that's in command. You've finished, and it's his turn. And this is the last verse. So that your faith might not rest on human wisdom, but on God's power. We just heard the testimonies from Helen and Stuart this morning. That's exactly what it's talking about. Instead of struggling and struggling and struggling, just ask Holy Spirit. And he will open your eyes and you will see a house on a hill. That maybe you would have never seen if the Holy Spirit didn't answer that. There are amazing um, ways that God can speak to us, can lead us into peace, can bring us that joy, that strength. Lean on Him. Do not trust in human wisdom. Trust the Holy Spirit's power. Now, I've quoted this scripture here um, because it's one of my favorite scriptures. This is the scripture that the Lord spoke to me when I was um, in Spokane in, uh, in the States in 2011. When I was trying to worship God. And I saw the people with their hands up in the air and they were all free in worship and so forth. And I, I thought to myself, they look like they are enjoying themselves. That's what church should be. You know, you know if God loves you and God has given you freedom, there should be freedom rather than like a statue standing still and, you know, frozen. And is it the frozen one or the chosen one? No, the chosen one. Anyhow, I tried to lift my arm and I couldn't. I was so conscious of men, of people. I tried again and I couldn't. And then the Lord spoke. He said, Proverbs 29, verse 25. That's why I didn't put the reference over there. And as soon as he said that, I thought, right. That's both an encouragement and a telling of because there's no good for you to memorize a Bible verse if you don't live it. It's just a waste of time. You can quote John 3.16, For God so loved the world. For God so loved Peter, Paul, Mary. And yet, Peter, Paul, and Mary are anything but love. It's just a waste of time knowing it's John 3.16. You have to experience what Bible verses are talking about. So it was both an encouragement and a telling of encouragement to know that I know his word, that is a good start, but a telling of by saying, look at what the verse says. Fear of men, fear of people, will set a trap up for you. It says it brings a snare, a snare is a trap. You know the trap that they catch animals with and birds and so forth? It says, when you are fearful of people, there's a trap coming. You're going to be ensnared. And then he said, where did you come from again? I said, New Zealand. And said, where are you? Spokane. And he said, what are the chances of anybody in Spokane here in the United States know who you are? And I thought, oh, that's a good point. And so my hand went up, and it's been going up ever since. And then the other arm went up, and then while I was praising God like this, he gave me a picture. He said, have you ever seen children running up to their parents, very, very small children, and that's what they do? Daddy, daddy, or mommy, mommy? He said, I love that. This is God speaking to me. I love that. It's like you putting up your arms to me. It's very personal. And I love my sons and daughters to do that to me. Calling out, Daddy, Daddy. Abba, Father, my Heavenly Father. And if you read the Gospels, that's exactly how Jesus addressed God. He called him Daddy. Abba, Father. Abba is an Aramaic word. Translates to English, means Daddy. Isn't it incredible? But an incredible revelation for us this morning. Whoever trusts in the Lord shall 
be safe. Whoever trusts in the Lord shall be safe. So you may be somewhere where the Lord prompts you to say something or do something, and the fear of man, oh, what will they say? What will they think? Just remember this verse. If you give in to that pressure of people, that verse is you are in for a trap. And one of the traps that the, that the enemy does for us when we go quiet and say nothing or don't do what we're supposed to do, it gives you a memory of what happened in the previous time. And when the same opportunity comes again, you won't do it. Maybe the first time you could have done it, but this time you certainly won't do it. Because that fear will just build upon you. What will they think of, of me? But the Bible says there's only one opinion that you should care about. God's. There's only one person you should care about. God's opinion. His view of who you are. And the Bible has made it very clear. We are his sons and daughters. Did you know that God's got your photo in his wallet? You are very special to him. But you must believe that. You must believe that because it's all about grace. Nothing to do with your performance. So, that brings us right back where we started. Now let's look at our key verse. For by grace, by God's doing, by God sending his own son into this world, that you have been saved by trusting in him. By trusting in him. Look at those words again. For by grace you have been saved, you have been healed, you have been delivered, you have been loved, you have been forgiven, you have been accepted. By grace, all of those. You have been empowered, you have been given hope by grace. What else? Through faith. Through faith. Faith is the connecting part between the Bible and your heart. Trusting, in other words. As you read it, you read the words of God. Remember, faith comes by hearing. And as, remember the series I did about uh, your hand like that? You have to hear the word of God, read the word of God. Uh, memorize the word of God, meditate and apply the word of God. Hearing. And it's a good idea to read the scriptures aloud. Read it aloud to yourself. Because as you're reading it aloud, faith is released. Faith is released. For by grace, you have been saved. The word saved is the Greek word sozo which has many meanings. It's faith is, uh, sozo is salvation, it's healing, it's deliverance, it's so forth. By grace, the grace of God through Jesus Christ, you have been saved through your trusting. God will not Make you trust. It's your own trust. And the sooner you apply that, the sooner you will see breakthroughs. There will be many ways that the devil will try and discourage you, but the sooner you leave it over to God and trust into God, whatever. There are people that have been praying for things for years and have not seen a single result. My suggestion to you, my brothers and sisters this morning, how about handing it over? Just saying, God, I'm finished. I've tried for so many years. I'm done. Over to you. And then you see what the Holy Spirit will do. It says, that not of yourselves. The grace didn't come because you came to church. Grace didn't come because you paid tithes and offerings, which we will do very soon. Grace didn't come because your father and your mother were Christians. Grace didn't come because somebody was praying for you. Well, 
Maybe that's part of it. Grace came because Jesus Christ was sent by Father God as your solution and my solution for our problem called sin. Sin metanoia in the Greek, it means changing your, sorry, that's repentance. <laughs> Hamatia in, in Greek, it means missing the mark. Missing the mark. If I were to put a bull's eye up there and we each throw a dart, every time you miss the bull's mark, uh, the, the eye, whatever you call it, the center, it's called sin. And did you know you and I have been trying to hit that mark for many, many years? And, and people, they even die without getting anywhere closer. God looked at us and said, I know how to fix your problem. I'm going to send my son and he's going to hit the bull's eye for you. So stop throwing. Have you ever heard of Charlie Brown's method of, uh, of throwing darts? Um, Charlie Brown would throw a dart and if it lands somewhere over here, then he, cr he throws the bull's eye there. Over there. And there were bull's eyes everywhere. And some of us do that. We set the goalposts every time. It says, not of works. It is the gift of God. The gift of God. Grace and faith are these gifts that God has given you and I. Not of works. None of us can turn up to heaven and say to Jesus, or the next door neighbor, do you know how much I tithe to my church? Do you know what I did yesterday? None of us can turn up to heaven and say that because God is only interested in one person, his son. And one of the questions he's going to ask is, what did you do with my son? Did you receive him? He was my solution for all your problems. What did you do to him, with him? And if your answer is yes, I received him, he will say, welcome. Welcome. To the joy. This is your master's place. Come and enjoy. And if not, it's going to be a very sad day. I heard of a man who had an experience and went to heaven and met Abraham, met Jacob, uh, no, David, uh, met Jonah, met Peter, uh, met Jesus. And he said as um, they were walking back, he saw the tears in Jesus' eyes. And he thought, well, this is heaven. You're not supposed to be crying. And he said, uh, what is it, Lord? And he said, it's that final day that I know it's coming. And I cannot avoid it. Where the people that were created in my image, I love them so, so much. But on that day, Anybody who has rejected me, the conclusion has already drawn. He already knows, and we already know, the final product of those who reject him. And he cries for those souls, for those spirits that will be lost forever. My friend, pray God that you are saved. You won't be one of those people. But my message to you today, grace is 100% God's doing, 0% your doing. If you are struggling, it's time to give over. It's time to surrender. Maybe in two or three weeks' time, I will preach, and my title will be, The War is Over. So look out for that, because it really is over. A lot of us are fighting battles that are not even supposed to be fought, and the devil is enjoying that. The, the war is over, it's finished. Jesus is the conqueror. Again, let me just quote our key verse for today. For by grace you have been saved through faith. 
that not of yourselves. It is the gift of God, not of works, lest anyone should boast. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for your word this morning. It is indeed by grace. While we were lost, hopeless, struggling, um, in bondage, not hearing, not seeing, not perceiving, Jesus Christ came and hung on a cross and he called out to each and every one of us, it is finished. Thank you that that is so. Thank you so much, Jesus, for the death you died was also our death. The pain you suffered was also our pain. Sicknesses and illnesses, the 39 stripes, they were all ours as well. Every problem we face this world, every form of evil that has come against us, you absorbed and took every single one of them for us on that cross. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you so, so much. We want to acknowledge you today as our very Savior who saved us from our sins, who saved us from our sicknesses, who has saved us from our poverty, who has saved us from our brokenness, who has saved us from our imprisonment, from our darkness, from our confused, um, confused minds, from our lostness, Lord, inability to live life to the full. Jesus, thank you. And to you we commit what's being preached, that it will go deeply into our hearts, especially our souls, Lord, that from here onwards, we would surrender, give you the battles, give you the struggles, because they are already won anyhow. Thank you for your word. Holy Spirit, bless it to our hearing and especially to our contemplation in the hours, in the days, in the weeks to come, that indeed we may walk as sons and daughters of God to your glory and honor. Jesus, amen. Amen.